Hey guys, I hope all of you all are doing well and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope your investment portfolios are also performing well and uh, I'm very excited to present this week's video on the power of compounding. Now, the first time when I personally realized what the power of compounding really is, uh, it completely blew my mind and I was flabbergasted. And for the next two, three hours, I was literally trying to get my head around as to how this is possible in the first place. But um, it is true. It is, it is a mathematical law. And uh, I, I was completely enchanted by it. And it completely changed the way I invest, the way I look at my portfolios and the way I balance uh, different stocks in my portfolio. Um, so please subscribe to this channel. Please like this video. And um, if, you, if you find it engaging, please comment on it. The more you like, engage and, and comment with my videos, the more the YouTube algorithm will extend its reach to more like-minded people who can also view this video. So without further ado, let's get into it. Um, I'll just start sharing my screen. Um, so yeah, um, this uh, video is going to be about what, according to me, is the real or the more understated power of compounding. Um, now, you know, mostly people talk about um, what the conventional power of compounding is. So if you look on, uh, look up articles online, or if you look at other YouTube videos, they'll basically tell you, oh, the power of compounding is, 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 you know, such that you get exponential returns in the long run. Now we obviously know this now in this, in this graph, basically, if I put hundred dollars or hundred rupees, uh, and I compounded at 10% or 20%, you can see that, uh, by the 20th year, uh, the 20% compounding will give me about $4,500 um, dollars or rupees, whatever, whatever your currency is. Uh, and a 10% compounding will give you 500. So this basically, so when people talk conventionally about the power of compounding, they speak about these two things, which is the, which is one that you get exponential returns in the long run, which is absolutely true. You can see how the graph um, uh, increases at an increasing rate over time. And secondly, how small changes in the rate can make such a big difference. So if we go from 10% to 20%, um, the compounding goes from 500 to 4,500. So a 10% increase in the rate um, ensures a nine times return, right? From 500 to 4,500. And of course, the longer you give time, the, the more time you give to compound, the better it compounds. So everybody knows this, you know, everybody knows uh, this is the conventional power of compounding. And this is what like 90% of, of videos or articles will talk about. But my hope is to show you guys something that I hope really blows your mind. And it's something that's very understated. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that compounding is a beautiful concept because when compounding is positive, it increases at an increasing rate. But when compounding is negative, it decreases at a decreasing rate. Now I've, I've thrown a lot of jargon already, but let me simplify it for you. Now, if you look at these graphs, right? What it basically shows you is that if um, I have, I, I get a certain rate of return, it can be positive. It can be negative. What compounding really ensures is that the positive rate of return really increases by a lot. Whereas the negative compounding ensures that beyond a minimum, your money, you will not lose your money. So let's take a mathematical example of this, right? Supposing I pick a stock um, and I get 20% returns year on year for the next 10 years. So um, how much will it compound to, right? So I do one plus 0 0.20 to the power 10 and it gives me six times or 6.19 to be exact. So if I put a hundred bucks, um, in year one and, and I let it compound for 20% for 10 years, at the end of the 10th year, I will have 619 uh, in my account. So that is the positive power of compounding, right? But interestingly, look what happens if you flip, if you flip the sign, if you completely look at it from the opposite point of view. If I have a stock and it is decreasing every year by 20%, so supposing I have hundred rupees of a stock today in one year, it becomes 80 and it keeps reducing by 20% every year. My money will basically go to 0 0.01. So if I, if I put like one rupee, right. Um, and it compounds negatively at 20% for, 
for the next 10 years, my money just goes to say 0 0.01, right? Now, I don't, I, I hope you realize this, but what's really happening is that if I start from an equal base, right? There is no upper limit to how much I can compound, but there is a lower limit uh, beyond which I cannot, you know, beyond which I cannot go below. And that lower bound is zero. So what happens is you can compound as much as you can on the upper side, but on the downside, your all your your limit is zero, whereas the upper limit is infinite, right? So keep in mind this um, asymmetric nature of compounding, which is that it's when you when you go up, when it's positive compounding, there's no limit. But if you have negative compounding, the limit is zero. So now once we've established this, right? How does it affect our investments, our portfolio, our stocks? And how can we go about looking at compounding from a completely different lens? So let's assume, right, that we have in our portfolio, we have two stocks, right? One stock um, gives me positive 26% returns. The other stock gives me negative 26% returns every year. And I put 50% um, in both stocks, right? If I have 100 rupees, I put 50 uh, in stock A, which gives me positive 26%. And I put 50 rupees in stock B, which gives me negative 26%. Now, because of what we saw in the previous slide, because of this asymmetric nature of compounding, look what happens. What's happening is over time, the portfolio, right? The portfolio, the aggregate portfolio return goes more and more towards stock A, which is the positive 26%. So if you leave this for 10 years, your portfolio compounds at about 17.6 or 18% every year, which means that if I have to pick two stocks and one stock is uh, compounding positively, the other stock is compounding negatively, I will still get a rate of return that is pretty high. That's still 18%. That's still very close or relatively more close to the stock that's performing well. And you, and if you look at this graph from year three and year four itself, the performance of the portfolio is completely dominated by stock A and stock B completely becomes irrelevant, right? So what's the conclusion of this, right? What is the real breakthrough with this? The real breakthrough for me, which is extremely insightful is that I can be wrong 50% of the time and still make good returns. Now, let that sink in. I'll repeat that. I can be wrong 50% of the time and I'll still make good returns. Why? Because the power of compounding is asymmetric in nature. Now, what this means is that supposing I have two stocks, um, I have, say, Apple and I have another company which say, hasn't done that well, maybe Canon, like, or, or maybe it's like some radio company, right? Or some, or some like company, which, which sells like, um, which sells cameras, right? Uh, what is basically happening is that if I have um, one, one wrong company, or even if 50% of my companies are wrong, the power of compounding ensures that I will still make returns that are commensurate to my winning portfolio. So, more realistically, if you have 20 stocks or if you have 10 stocks in your portfolio, even if five of them or 10 of them are, um, are giving you negative returns, right? Let's not even talk about small returns. Let's take the worst case and say they'll give me negative returns. The power of compounding ensures that over a period of time, after the third or fourth year itself, my portfolio is still going to give me good returns. And this uh, ladies and gentlemen, is why people say you should be invested for the long term because the power of compounding ensures that you can be wrong 50% of the times. I'll still repeat that because even when I say it, 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 it takes time to sink inside me that I can be wrong 50% of the times with my portfolios, but um, I will still do well as long as I give it some long-term time. And as long as, of course, I have stocks which also compound positively and also compound well. So this for me is a really important insight and uh, which I hope you take from today's video 
as to what really is the power of compounding the power of compounding is not like oh you have exponential returns um, and you know uh, you should let the asset grow and it's the eighth wonder of the world as albert einstein said but the power of compounding really is it gives you the option it gives you the opportunity to be wrong 50% of the times or for every two decisions you take in life one can be wrong but the one that's correct will ensure that it overpowers the wrong one um that is because the power of compounding is asymmetric in nature it's convex upward and it's concave downward um so this has been extremely insightful and that is why i was very excited to make this video very early on because i thought this is like financial knowledge that uh, you should know about so i i hope you like this video uh, please comment on it please share it if you think it's insightful and please subscribe uh, to my youtube channel i look forward to seeing you in the next one